Good morning. My name is Tom. I come to you from the rustic log cabin in northern Maine. Welcome to my cabin this morning. We're actually standing inside the trapping shed. Or oh, my workshop, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I do a little bit of everything in here. This building is 16 feet wide, 32 feet long with 10 foot ceilings. Uh, I built it several years ago. It just makes a great place uh, to take care of my hunting equipment and all of that now. I used to use it in the uh, construction when I was building all the cabins. But today's video, I want to do something a little different. It has been extremely humid here for the last two weeks. Humid and hot, uh, well into the 90s. Well, if uh, you've, you've heard in my video several times that my thick main blood does not like the high humidity or the high temperatures. So I've been hiding in this uh, shop as much as I can, uh, getting ready for winter and like I said in my last video, uh, doing some remodeling in here. As you can see, I've got a nice cabinet now uh, hanging in back of me. That was a cabinet that I saved out of a remodeling job probably 10 years ago. I was always going to do something with it, I just didn't know what. And I felt it was too good a condition to just throw away, you know, kitchen cabinet with glass doors and all that. Oh, for several times I thought about putting it out by the road for free because it was kind of in the way in here in the shop. What I was using it for was a bench, it was sitting on the floor. So I would just put tools on it and stuff like that, nothing too heavy duty, but you know, keeping it good just in case. And then uh, when I decided to remodel the shop, uh, it ended up on the wall, so now it's got a great place. But like I said, today is going to be a little different video just because I'm in the shop. I've got some uh, unique items that I have been packing around for the better part of 40 years, one of them anyways. And a lot of my uh, viewers... And they say I, I, uh, I bring back memories for them. So one of the things I wanted to kind of like show and tell here today, I wanted to bring this old stove out because I realize, I think anyways, that some of my viewers will remember this stove and maybe they can uh, give me some information on it, like how old it is or if they ever used it on a camping trip. But grab yourself a cup of coffee. What I've got here is a one burner kerosene cook stove. I have no idea of its age. I've, I bought it in a lawn sale 40 years ago just because I thought it was unique and I had never seen one before in my life. The little windows you he see here are mica, the stone and it opens up and as you can see this whoops it opens up and there's two six inch wicks in there that go up and down with these with these knobs and everything works on it and it holds kerosene uh, the whole nine yards when I first got it it was the only stove I had for camping so we brought it with us I didn't I couldn't afford a Coleman stove and all that uh, back in my early 20s so this is what I actually used and I think in that lawn sale I think I got it for uh, five dollars I don't really remember but I know I didn't I didn't throw that much for it but it's just a unique stove that's uh, always been around my my camping and hunting stuff just because I like it <laughs> and the other thing I've got here that I kind of thought was kind of unique like I said, I got that in a lawn sale. And the other thing that I, I brought out to show you guys today is this is a mechanical jack. It's gear driven. You turn the handle here. This is you can put a uh, you can put a handle in there. Obviously, it was a square handle, but it goes both ways and it will screw up. Or you flip this over. This little lever here will flip over, and you can and you can screw it the other way. This was my grandfather's jack. Now, I have no idea what they used it for, if it was for cars or what, but it was a, it's a mechanical jack that, uh, I don't know, 
my grandmother said anything out in the shed you want you can have and this is one of the things that I grabbed out of his shed after he had passed away so but I always thought that was kind of unique <laughs> so <laughs> and in this state uh, a lot of people in this state will know what this is right here but I wanted to show it to you because it is so unique uh, to the state of Maine. Uh, you guys take a guess? I'll give you a few minutes to take a guess at what this is. Now I don't know that much about it. But I know what it is. And I use it for an anvil now. Because it's really handy to have in the shop. Gives me a nice little anvil. And I almost think that's what it was for when it was when it was in use. Uh, what if this is is a shoehorn, or it has something to do with making shoes? Like I said, I don't know anything at all about it, other than I know that it's has something to do with making shoes. Uh, and this state, you know, back oh, must have been 100 years ago or 70 years ago, maybe even as as early as back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, was a shoe state. We have shoe factory after shoe factory after shoe factory. So and this somehow, I got this from my grandfather's shed as well, uh, somehow he managed to get his hands on it. I couldn't tell you how, but anyways that was, that's just kind of a unique, unique thing to the state of Maine. Everybody thinks we're just lobster, lobster, lobster. Well, we're not just lobster, lobster, lobster. Even though that's the uh, the trend and everybody think that's what that's what we are is all lobster lobster and lobster boats and all that actually the lobster and all that stuff is all more or less 50 miles within the coastline and then the rest of the state is made up of lots of other things that have nothing to do with lobstering at all uh, but most tourists don't really realize that or whatever uh, I love lobster and I'm not knocking lobster or the lobster men, but there is a big state here and we are a lot more than just lobster. Uh, you know, the uh, wood industry was huge here uh, forever. Uh, you take northern Maine, everybody thinks it's all trees and trees and trees. But if you look at the map and you pick out names and stuff like that, especially if you get up around uh, St. John River and all of that, you start, you start looking at the map and you see farm names or you see people's names on the map. And they actually were uh, big farms because most of the top of the state was nothing more than a, a big field. Uh, you know, 100 years ago, uh, big lo logging industries and stuff like that. And big farms because uh, back then everything was done with horse. So it, it took big farms to maintain the herd of horses the teams of horses and all that that worked the woods back then. I couldn't give you times and dates and all of that stuff, but I just know the history of the top of the state, uh, especially around the, the, the St. John River and stuff like that as you get down. And now it's all just great big woods and stuff like that, and everybody thinks it's always been woods. That couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, probably the top of the state was more settled than the south part. If it, if it came right down to it back then, who knows. But anyways, that's what today was, kind of a, you know, I haven't been able to get over there to the, the building project, uh, like I said, for the, at least the last week and a half. Just uh, too, too much humidity. But Monday I'm headed for the, uh, I'm headed for the Beaver Creek cabin, and Monday I'm going to finish up my odds and ends. I, I cannot wait to get a videotape of it for you guys. Uh, what's what I've got done over there now is all the walls are boarded in the roof is boarded in um, What I'm finishing up now is I'm getting ready to install the windows So Monday's job is going to be to just it's, there's a few pieces here and there that I, I still need to cut out with a table saw and skill saw Get those nailed on trim up the roof uh, Cut out the chimney hole. It's all framed up and just boarded over so I've got to cut that out and then probably Tuesday I'll be hauling the windows in so I can uh, start putting the windows in, get that behind me, get a door built. And before long it'll be weather tight. I've still got to gather up my steel roofing and ice and water shield uh, for the roof. 
I'm going to buy my steel roofing. Uh, there's an Amish store over in, uh, oh, what's the name of that town? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Can't think of it right now, but anyways, there's an Amish store that sells steel roofing, and that's where I'm going to go buy my steel roofing. And the reason I'm going to buy my steel roofing from them, as, as opposed to anywhere else, is they will cut it exactly to what I need. So if I needed 68 and one half inch, they'll cut it 68 and one half inch. The whole pile. So, so once I get it to the building site, I don't need to do anything to it except start installing it onto the uh, roof. And that's why I go to that Amish store, because that is probably the handiest way that I can do roofing. I know I enjoy not having to cut it, so that's, uh, you know, they have big cutters. I don't have the cutter. I have to cut it with a, uh, a skill saw with the blade in backwards, which is a, it does it. It's all right. Makes a lot of noise. I don't like to do it. So having them do it, it's no extra cost for it. So that's great. What I'm going to do is I'm having them cut me all the pieces for the roof. And then I am putting uh, at least three pieces in back of the wood stove. So those pieces will be six feet tall. And that way the stove, because I'm putting the stove fairly close to the wall, I'm going to put the stove within a foot of the back wall, and then about 30 inches from the side wall. That's the way the chimney worked out, uh, so, that, so that'll be perfect for me. But the steel roofing with a one inch gap behind it, and you leave it one inch off the floor, will allow airflow, so that way you can put your wood stove closer to the back wall without having any problems. So I'm just going to go clear to the ceiling with uh, six foot pieces. And the way the roof comes down it's six feet in the back. So by that way I'll have steel roofing all the way around that wood stove. So it'll be uh, very safe. On Monday I will set the video camera up and videotape the whole building so you guys can all be on the same page as I am as far as the uh, new building is concerned and I am looking forward to being able to use it I've already had the grandkids out there a couple of times now uh, they absolutely love the place the oldest one I had him out there helping me build he's 10 years old so he he felt like a big carpenter that day I had him taking measurements and marking boards and all kinds of stuff so that that's fun and I've got them coming in here today I've got a bunch of packages that came in from uh, eBay, I've been I've been uh, searching for used trapping equipment. So that's my life in a nutshell this week. So if you've got time and would like to throw me a bone, throw me a bone. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next week.